Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences, my dear fellow Americans. Welcome to the show, the East West Show. Your host Jack Chow is here with ICTTV.、Uh, for the past one week, we are, I am, and everybody of my crew is in the celebrate the sort of very celebration mood because we have. We're seeing something that has been so long in the waiting. The gold medal being signed, being signed by President Donald Trump into law, that the contribution of the Chinese American veterans during World War II had been recognized.、Uh, the part is、uh, the sorry part is that lots of them, the folks who had fallen. Never made it to the day, and as part of those who did survive the war, however, you know they passed away. There are only a few left. We still、uh, feel that it was still well, it's about the perfect timing.、Uh, any day later than that would be too late, right?、Uh, also, today a big subject is that is about our 2019 Rose Parade, a tradition for over 100 years. That needs to be talked about. However, in the parade, you will see something once again you feel proud of. So, now, now today with me are two wonderful friends of mine. I have uh, uh, Ed Gore, the past president of Orange County、no. Chinese American Citizen Alliance. Am I right at this time? No, he's the national president. Oh,、president. national! Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay. Uh, once again, uh, rather uh, past president of the United States National Citizen Alliance of、uh, located in Orange County. So, Ed, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jack. Pleasure to be here. All right, good. And also, we have on my right hand side,、uh, Mr. Zhang Wang. You know him. The last few times he was here, sharing the big moment of a gold medal. Zhang Wang is a、uh, proud member of the Orange County、uh, American Citizen Alliance,、uh, a great organization that lots of people、uh, like. And of course, every time when there comes with the election, though, you hear them about a lot.、Right? So, to you, to you both, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, uh, while you were not here last few times.、Mm-hmm. We did had some good moment talking about the victory of the gold medal, right? And on my side, we used the platform、uh, on the daily news, on the magazine, on the social network to share the big information、mm-hmm. with our folks, right? And I believe I learned from John. You were one of the Very, very early initiator of the whole issue. Well, say something well, about well, it. Well, Jack,、please. it's a, it's a, it's a real honor for me to be part of this entire effort. And、uh, no great idea comes unless there's other people involved, Jack.、Mm-hmm. And people like、uh, John Wong and、uh, Betty Tom Chu,、uh, Sophie Wong, and others at the、uh, mm-hmm. Orange County CACA Lodge were very instrumental, as, were, as well as those at the、uh, Greater San Gabriel Lodge as、mm-hmm. well. In formulating this idea, so they had this idea three years ago before we even started the project. They had been actively working on Veterans Day every、mm. year, honoring veterans. So Congressman Ed Royce was an active participant in that. So they recognize all veterans, not just Chinese American veterans, but all、mm. veterans、uh, in Orange County every every year. And so、uh, at the end of 2016, if I can make, give you a little history behind how this whole project started,、mm. uh, we, we talked about it. A couple of friends of ours talked about this because the Filipino had just received the President Obama had just signed that their their、uh, medal into law as well.、Mm. So the Filipinos were awarded that, and we said, you know, it is about time that we as Chinese Americans do the same thing for our. Chinese American War II veterans. So,、mm. uh, push came to shove. We got the word out that we're interested in doing this. So we talked to all of our lodges across the country,、mm. and fortunately, we had people here in、uh, San Gabriel and Orange County who were willing to to help us with this. And so, through contacts with Congressman Ed Royce, we got bills、uh, introduced into Congress.、Uh, both Congressman Ed Royce and Congressman Ted Lieu on the House、uh, side introduced the bill, and on the Senate side. 
uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth and Senator Thad Cochran in Mississippi, uh, Senator Duckworth from Illinois, of course, uh, introduced the Senate bills. So May 6th of uh, 2017, those bills came into being and, and miraculously and fantastically with the help of mm -hmm. communities uh, across the country, uh, predominantly Chinese American communities. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, we had many, many people contacting their senators and congressmen mm -hmm. to get both bills passed. And so the Senate passed the bill but with unanimous consent. Everyone agreed yes, unanimous, uh, yes. mm -hmm. to pass their bill September 12th of this year. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, on, uh, in, in December, uh, uh, December twelfth, uh, it was uh, the House passed their bill, unanimous yeah. consent as well. And as you just mm -hmm. said, uh, President Trump signed the bill in law just before the holidays. That was so, a supermajority too. There's over over three hundred, three oh seven. Correct. We mm -hmm. had three hundred and seven co-sponsors in the House sign on the bill. That is a tough task. So if if I can just tell you a little bit about how much work that is, it's a tremendous amount of work to contact every Congressperson in in the House. And we're talking about 50 states, 435 people that we contacted. Uh, wow. So 306 of those people, at least two thirds, had to pass uh, super supermajority mm. to get this bill. So it was a tremendous effort by many, many people. We contacted people, letters, uh, personal visits to district offices, people who who went on social media to contact their Congress members to support this bill as co-sponsors. And in the Senate side, the same thing. Senate's a little bit. I'd say easier because we only have 100 people there. Uh, but you know, you have to remember, there are many states that uh, uh, Chinese Americans, Asian Americans do not reside in in, pop in uh, large numbers. Uh, yes, I mean, yes, we can talk yes. about Montana, Idaho, uh, parts of the Midwest. Uh, we can talk about those. So we only look, we think of Asian Americans being all over the country, which we are, but not in the great numbers that would influence the vote. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of work and uh, for that, Jack, um, I am just humbly uh, proud of the Chinese American community for doing this. You're right, you're right. My way of looking at it is that, especially at this moment, when the mm -hmm. country is so divided, mm -hmm. so are the house, mm -hmm. right? So are the t both houses. Mm -hmm. When they are so divided, take the Senate House, for example, mm -hmm. unanimously passing one bill that's unprecedented almost, right? You never, or at least you seldom hear about that. That's correct. And even in the house though, you talk about three, four blocks of different people among the 435. Mm -hmm. To get 307 vote on that, that's a really, really a unanimous issue at mm -hmm. least, right? All right, now. And uh, to my friend John, last time he shared uh, lots of inside issues, mm -hmm. or even, 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 even his personal feelings about how, uh, how much an emergency that issue was, right? So, John, once again, I still want to do it in a, in a way that, uh, that we really want to make, make, make it understood by the audience is that the efforts were not only being great, mm -hmm. but tremendous in the detail part, right? Thank you, Jack, for mm -hmm. uh, inviting us to to uh, be on this show again. Mm -hmm. And just to tell, tell you a little story about uh, how I've got started on this, on this bill, mm -hmm. is I got a call from our national president of the uh, Chinese American Citizens Alliance. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, no, no, I, I was president, I was pr uh, formerly the vice president of the mm -hmm. Chinese American Citizens mm -hmm. Alliance. And he said, John, you know, we're trying to, trying to get this uh, goal, metal bill to be introduced into the House and the Senate. And uh, we seem to be having a little trouble getting into Royce's office. Mm -hmm. And he says, can you, can you ask Ed Royce to sponsor this bill? <laughs> uh -huh. And I says, mm -hmm. Ed, there's no problem. We can do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that he will uh, sponsor this mm -hmm. bill. And that was in January of 2017 17 mm -hmm. and it was a time when uh, uh, Miss uh, President Trump was to be inaugurated mm -hmm. and uh, Betty Chu Betty Tom Chu and mm -hmm. Sophie Wong just happened to be in Washington DC at the time for the inauguration mm -hmm. I called Betty because Betty and I are very good friends and uh, we know the, the 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 representative Ed Royce and I said Betty you go and talk to Ed Royce and have him sponsor this bill and Betty said okay and uh, 
before before we know it, Betty was talking with the Ed Royce, mm. and uh, you know, within two or three minutes, uh, Ed Royce says, "I'll be happy to sponsor this legislation. Mm. Not only that, mm. I will lead the charge in getting yeah. its passage." It, it, so this is case, what happened. It looks to me that it had been in the mind of all those important people only at a click everybody echoes at the same time right right mm -hmm. Go ahead. and then and then uh the senate passed the bill well before the senate passed the bill um Bei chu uh Bei tam chu and myself and probably about what the 18 18 members of our lodge from all over the country mm -hmm. we converge on the washington dc and we walk the corridors of power and uh, asking for co-sponsorship on this bill. Mm -hmm. I think that week, uh, Betty Tom Chu and myself probably walked over 60 offices. All right. And if we're not, if we didn't have a, if we didn't have an appointment, uh -huh. we walked in and charged in and talked to them All right. anyway. All right. right, all right, okay, uh, okay. So, you know. Walk-ins, uh, exactly. So Walk-ins, that's, that's, right. that's what we did. We, it was a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And uh, after we came back from Washington, D.C., we still have members in the East Coast that was continuously lobbying in Washington, mm. D.C. for co-sponsorships. And uh, what is worth to point out is that the, uh, the writer of the uh, draft, oh. Mr. John Chi, I had a talk with him, and he was the one that I would like to give him a huge credit about, and he did the version. The oh, version, yes. the first mm -hmm. version, yes. the text, the the whole thing, right? Okay. Well, you know, uh, John G. in in corroboration with Betty Tom Chu, mm -hmm. uh, wrote the text of the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, we, we started from the time, from the time uh, Ed Roy said that he would sponsor the bill, which is in January, mm -hmm. and then in two weeks after he said that he would, then we were we met with the, the congressman in Fullerton, mm -hmm. and at that time. It was, it was meant that John G. and Betty Chu would write the And of course, yes. above all, my dear friend, Betty Tom Chu, mm -hmm. a big sister to me, she is the one coordinating the, with all the efforts, right? And I would say this, it is not a uh, single person's job. Oh, no, no not yeah. at all. <laughs> it is the teamwork. <laughs> and the team has to be large enough. The team has to be star, smart enough and uh, diligent enough, right? Mm -hmm. My dear friend, today we are talking about the victory over the mm -hmm. gold medal in recognition to the Chinese American veterans for World War II. Joining me with my good friend, Mr. Ed Gore, the past president of the National Citizen, American Citizen Alliance, and also John Wang. Mr. John Wang is an old friend of mine. We go back many years. And he is the one. If there is an issue, there must be Mr. Wang behind, right? So he is a proud member, a former chair of the uh, of the alliance, the the Chinese American uh, Citizen Alliance. Now he is still proud senior active member of that organization. Beautiful organization. Let's take a very short moment now. When we come back, we'll find out. We will have to find out the significance of that bill of that gold medal. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Hello, dear friends, lovely audience. It's my dear fellow Americans. Welcome back to the show. Jack Chow, your host on the uh, ICTTV with the East-West subject. And we cover a lot of all the subjects though for this year, 2018, a year that is about to go to the end, only a few days left. Not so exciting with the positive news. However, this one is the one that makes it our, well, worth our while for all the hardship of 2018. That's the one that the gold medal been issued, been signed by President Donald Trump in recognition to the honor of the Chinese American veterans during World War II. What a what a long wait. Uh -huh. uh, with me today is my good friend, Mr. Ed Gore. 
he is the past president of the United States National uh, American Citizens Alliance, and also uh, John Wang, the uh, uh, past uh, chair of uh, Orange County mm -hmm. American Citizens Alliance, and he is also still a senior and active member of that beautiful organization. John Wang's a big name. If there is issue, like I said, if there is issue, there must be John Wang behind. I mean, the positive issues, right? Okay, Not anyway. Necessary. So, you give okay, me now, too much credit, come Jack. to, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I'm, not, I'm not lying, I'm not lying. My, 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 my audience all know me. That's why they buy me. That's why at time of election, well, of course, you know, they kind of yeah. think that they go where I go because <laughs> they trust me. Thank you for the trust, my dear folks. Okay, now, we're talking about, uh, this is the sweet and sour. The other day I called it sweet sour. Lots of people were having tears in eyes because, number one, like I said, many fallen soldiers, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. they did not make it to the day. And the many who did survive the war, though, mm -hmm. they did not survive the years, mm -hmm. right? They passed away too early. And uh, now you look at the years, though, the basic or simplest calculation will bring you to 93 or 95 or even above mm -hmm. at age, mm -hmm. right? I have, I know one uh, hero of that uh, category, Jerry Champ. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Jerry Chen, back then, he was the one in charge of a fuel supplies for flying tigers, mm. right, a big guy, mm -hmm. a small body, big guy, and uh, I called him immediately, the other day I heard that, I called him, and uh, he called back, he did call back, uh, with a very, very weak tone, tone saying that, I can't make it, I'm, uh, too old, I have too many problems or so forth, but he was excited to hear that, right? Mm -hmm. With that though, I have to ask you, with the gold medal there, right? With the message delivered, they themselves, there are, there are a handful left? Handful. Or maybe less? You know, this mm -hmm. year I have two of my good friends passed away, Jack, and they were flying tigers. So. And, uh, uh -huh. And I had I had I had visited one of, one of their widows mm. at the hospital yesterday, uh -huh. and I told her, told her that uh, when when uh, when the gold medals are struck, and when they are made available, I would mm. definitely make one available for her. So I'm very concerned about yeah. that. So my question to mm. you or to you be, would be that what you plan to do next? Well, those folks Great. I'm gonna have. Do I really hate to say this, but in the, it is a mother nature law, right? right. Okay. Right. You can't live forever, right? That's true. If they had to pass away, though, let them pass away, pass away satisfied. With right. dignity. Yeah, Absolutely. with dignity, right? That's true. So what mm -hmm. do you want to do to catch the, to, it looks like a race. It, it is a of race, and this is why we were so motivated to have this uh, particular bill signed in legislation uh, now, because as you just said, uh, many of them are passing away. We think the youngest member could be as young as 93. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had about a year ago, a 105 year old uh, gentleman, Pat Pang from Mississippi, who just passed away, 105 oh. years old. Uh, today, I do know there's a gentleman just celebrated his birthday, 100 years old in El Paso, Texas. His name is George Yee. All right. December 6th was Still his alive. Birthday. Still alive. Still Going alive. Well, doing well. And I just want to just, uh, just say that uh -huh. it's not just for him. It is for all the Chinese Americans. We figured there were, uh, we estimated there were about 18,000 Chinese, Chinese Americans who served during World mm -hmm. War II. Mm -hmm. And most of their stories are forgotten. And yeah, that's the other part day of uh, he yeah. brought the uh, statistics. It was the 12,000 to 20,000. There's some that number range. in there that yeah. we think of. And, no, you're and, close, and you're and close. Part, yes. part of our reason for doing this is to locate those either surviving uh, uh, family members or the actual veterans who are still alive. We, mm -hmm. we estimate there could be from 50 to 100 around the country that are still alive. And this all effort, together, all, all together, together, all together. Uh, mm -hmm. Out of the, uh, you know, uh, as you said, almost 18,000 that we think are, are, are served during that period of time. But, but Jack, I think the important point is to recognize that the country needs to see that the Chinese Americans also served in the war. That story has never been really uh, told to fulfillment. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they're part of what, what we've called, uh, what Tom Brokaw calls America's greatest generation. These, these mm -hmm. individuals also mm -hmm. served. And what happened is after that, they came back, started families, started businesses, careers, became part of the American fi fabric that makes our c country and our community great. Well, yeah. And yeah. This, this is a thing that's always not exactly uh, remembered by mm. many people. And so this is our opportunity as a second, third, fourth generation Chinese here to recognize uh, our forefathers. My, both my father and father-in-law were, were War II veterans, as a matter ah. of fact. And so uh, I, I didn't just do it for them, although it had been a good story, <laughs> but I did it because I remembered how, how they talked about their story. They didn't talk about it very openly when, they were, when, mm. they were, when I was young, but, but after, after a while, they started talking about the things that they did. So it, what would be your next step, John? Well, actually, yeah. before we go to the next step, John, uh -huh. I'd just like to mention that uh, of the uh, service pe servicemen that served in World War II, you know, the Chinese population at that time mm -hmm. was around 200,000, maybe mm -hmm. 100,000, mm -hmm. about 100,000. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there was 20,000 that volunteered to be in the service. One-fifth. That's 20% right. of the population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The general population mm -hmm. that volunteered for the, for the services at that time, of, of the entire United States only at, was only at about 5%. What needs to be especially, especially pointed out was that they had the just the coming through the nightmare of a Chinese That's exclusion. Correct. That's yeah. correct. Right. Absolutely right. correct. And then there's no hate, no nothing. Right. They served the country as if nothing had happened, exactly like exactly. every brother or sister is born here. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Well said. Right? So that is the great part. That is the great part. Yeah. Right. So go ahead. Go ahead, please. And uh, you were mentioning now about what are we going to do well, how do we move forward from yeah, there? Yeah, please, please. But I'm going to defer that to our <laughs> nas past national <laughs> yeah, yeah, president good. to do that. Good. But, but Jack, well, what's your better. plan? What's Let your me plan? just say it's a real pleasure to, to, to come on your show and really talk about this because, mm -hmm. this, uh, because this happened during the holidays. Many of us haven't had a chance to even yeah, breathe yeah. about mm -hmm. what we know. Uh, let me just say what I do know today. When President Trump signed this uh, bill into legislation, it, it enacted Congress now to start some wheels in motion on the process of how the Congressional Gold Medal is, is enacted. So from this point forward, all of the things that happen will be dealing with uh, the U.S. Mint, the Smithsonian. So Congress will, through, uh, through uh, Senator Duckworth and, and Senator Hirono, will be sending a letter to, to the U.S. Mint, which then engages them to start the process of designing the medal. So the medal is designed by a group of, of historians and artists who collaborate together, agree upon what the front and the back of the medal could look like. Mm -hmm. So, so, so mm -hmm. several designs are submitted to the Congressional Gold Medal Committee, uh, which I'm a, I'm a member of that committee. I'm, I'm the chair of that committee right now, and I have s several other members on the committee mm -hmm. besides myself, and, uh, and I'm not uh, at liberty to divulge who they are right this moment, but after the first of the year, we will. And so that design committee will be collaborating with the U.S. Mint and the Smithsonian about the design of the medal, and we'll all come together on this. So we have uh, various military uh, people to work with us as well. But that's time-consuming, though. It will take, um, we, we figured that it will take anywhere from four to six months to have that entire process. Even four days are too much. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, the, no, I know. the, the history after, of how the After talking to Jerry Chan, yeah. I exactly felt the emergency, the urgency of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. doing we it agree. right away. We agree. So, uh, let's, let's talk about it. Just a free chat, right? right? Let's use everybody's brain to see if we can do something. Hmm. Can we or can the system whatsoever advance it? I would, I would have to defer that question to, to others who are in the Mint and yeah. as well as some Smithsonian. I don't know that we can advance the process. I, I will say this, where we have an opportunity to advance the timetable is if, if our group and the committee and the members of the committee can, can come to an agreement quickly and that, that could, as, as I said before, it just takes time to get the artists and exactly, the historians together. Exactly, exactly. Uh, can we or do that? Or let the artists work a draft, we use the draft, and the locally we copy it or something, and we we'll tell them, we, we, you will see the final one, the gold one, but right now let's do a paper one, something, well, I, I will say just this. for the celebration to cheer them up. Well, I'll say this. 
there are trademarks <laughs> involved, Jack, that we have to be careful about when uh, we talk about doing the, the uh, metal. Uh, okay. once, once the metal is designed by the committee and approved by the committee, the, the, the trademarks come into play. So we just, me, I can't even go in there and say, hey, I'd, like, I'd like a copy of that metal today uh, and try to use it. I mean, uh, there are many, many specifics. And also, to, when you to do protect celebrate. Integrity, to protect the integrity yeah. of the metal. When, do, when you do celebrate, John, uh, I was thinking about kind of a hard to have a one convention kind of uh, gathering uh, at one place because yeah. the older folks cannot travel. Well, what I think what we're going to do is we'll, we'll have many ceremonies throughout the country. Good. And one of the one of the one, yeah, of the, yeah. one, one of those ceremonies will be in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure one will be in D.C. Probably one in in Houston and one in Chicago. Mm. Uh, maybe someone one city in the yeah. Northwest. Mm. But we will have multiple ceremonies, and uh, I would be happy to go to each and every one of them. Very good, very good. Well, Jack, let, let me know. Let me abs know. Jack, absolutely. Uh, I just I want to just tell you. The protocol has been set up by the Congress. There, there's a, in public law, there will be a protocol. Um, there will be no celebrations or ceremonies held before the big celebration in Washington, D.C. at right. the Capitol Center. Uh, the Speaker of the House will convene and, and let us know what the date that would be. That would be, of course, after the medal oh, yeah. design. There's always a comp compromise. There's always, so, so, <laughs> so, so, so the big, so All right, the, anyway, the big celebration will anyway, be Anyway, when the big, big puzzle is, is, uh, is resolved, and uh, everything becomes like minor. Anyway, we can work it out. Only yes, we wish, we wish, we wish and wish, strong wish, only wish that God bless them, bless the heroes, let yeah. them wait. That's All right, correct. let's give them wait in good health because this is something they've been waiting for a whole life, for a whole That's life. Right. And this is the moment they see it, right? Okay, now let's take a break. We come back to continue celebration for something even better. So stay with us. <laughs> Hello, dear friends, love the audience, and welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West show with the ICT TV. Uh, we are having some good time once again celebrating the victory of the gold medal signed by President Donald Trump in honor to the Chinese American veterans for World War II. Big contribution to the great country, big com contribution to mankind, to world peace, right? To them, of course, each single day they deserve salute from everybody of us who enjoy the benefit mm -hmm. till today, right? Uh, thanks to the wonderful people, uh, some names I have to mention, uh, Betty Tom Chu, a former mayor of uh, Monterey Park, proud member and an active senior member of the Orange County uh, Citizen Alliance, uh, a big uh, leader in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Jan Wang, I have to mention, and he is an actor, senior member, by the way, former chair of the uh, Alliance, right? And he is still a senior active member of the organization. And the John G, the other day he was with us, and he was the one, uh, as a matter of fact, initiated the first draft of the bill text, right? Okay, now. And my friend, Ed Gore, he is the, he was, the past chair of the Chinese American Citizen Alliance, I mean, national, right? That's a big thing. And he was the one, was the very one who initiated the even idea of such a medal, right? And there are all lots of uh, people, like such as uh, Yang Kim, right? Used to work for Ed Royce for uh, over 20 years, I believe, 21, 22 20 years. years, right? Uh, uh, she is the one of the, of the big names that contributed to the great mm -hmm. success. Ed Royce, of course, is the one, the congressman right. who initiated, who introduced the bill. Right? Okay. And there are so many. Who else you want to mention, please? It's a big moment. We really want to give 
all of them they created all over the television. Jack, if I was piece. to start naming it, hmm? it would take your entire <laughs> program. Yeah. So I'm not going to go and name it. We have to cancel one. the show, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because, because, you know, it took the Filipinos almost 10 years to get their bill passed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because they didn't have the number of people working on this. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Chinese American Citizens Alliance, we have 19 lodges throughout the country, and they all converge into Washington, D.C. They pressure our, their representatives mm -hmm. to support it, and they pressure just about anybody mm -hmm. in Congress to pass this law. We have hundreds of people working on this. So, you know, just, I, 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 I just can't stop. Very to good point, very good point. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, my uh, dear folks, we decided not to cancel the show for the, <laughs> for, the, for the list, so let's continue. Okay, now, what I believe, what we can learn from this, this issue is that, okay, now, a president, you have only one president of the uh, of United States, right? Only one pencil that can sign into laws, right? And you have thousands of uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of issues on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> now, excuse me, is uh, it a full? It still applies to the, to my logic, the crying baby situation, right? So mm -hmm. you have that many babies who cries, you milk first, <laughs> right? right? All right. And like say, the squeaky wool, a squeaky wool gets the grease, right? A crying baby gets the milk. So, well, let's be the crying baby, right? So if you do not cry though, you're a good baby, you behave mm -hmm. yourself, you will never be remembered. Here's my logic. So you, you, you agree with me? I agree. And right, we good. had a lot of voices. And all those voices. Was all right, heard. thank you for the crying babies. <laughs> well, Jack, now, it does hurt. It does take relationships. You know, we can cry, but if it's not our mother or father who hears us, our cry, they yeah, could care less. But, and I think, <laughs> who cares? I, right. If I'm not their mother or father, yeah. I could care less if that yeah, baby's cares, crying. Right? But, but I think it's constituents uh -huh. and people who are part of the, the districts and people who who have a sincere desire to establish relationships mm. in Congress as well as locally. Speaking you know, of a crying yeah. baby. Uh, it's time to cry again. Okay. What we want to uh, do is that we want to cry for those who, during the early days of American foundation being built at that time, take the uh, Pan America Railroad, for example, that big, huge project. Mm -hmm. Chinese Americans did a big part, a major part in it. Correct. And what yet it wasn't recognized, it is not recognized <laughs> till today. right? That's why this year, 2019, we are doing something. We're crying. We started crying <laughs> with, a big, with a big tournament at the 2019 Rose Parade in Pasadena. I would give this opportunity to, to who wants it, to break the news. Well, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start first. Um, hey, well, good. The organization, um, uh, not only did uh, CACA, Chinese American Citizens Alliance, uh, help with this project because we've been involved with the Transcontinental Railroad effort for a long time, advocating for the civil rights of those railroad workers who, after the finishing of the project, were basically thrown out uh, mm -hmm. and tried to be expelled from the country. However, uh, through, the, through the work of the Chinese American Heritage Foundation, uh, founded by Esther and Wilson Lee of, of uh, Boston, Massachusetts, they brought this project idea. Wilson is a person who's got lots of ideas and, and uh, great ideas for helping the community. And one of the things he came up with was, why don't we have a float in the Rose Parade that would honor the contributions in the, of the Chinese Amer American railroad workers who worked on that transcontinental railroad who brought East and West together uh, the history tells us that uh, the Irish started from the East Coast and the Chinese started from the West Coast. And we only got to Promontory, Utah, which is just in Utah. The Irish made it all the way across because what? The flatlands. The of, flat of, land. of the country. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But let me just say what I have studied. Let me just say I'm a STEM person, Jack, so it takes a lot for history to get in my head. Ah, so, okay. so you've got to study this and get in my head. I've learned so much about the Chinese Americans who worked on the railroad. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they brought not only hardworking attitude. Leland Stanford, the founder of uh, Stanford University, name from, he actually employed so many Chinese workers. He sent more people back to China to recruit workers to come to this country mm -hmm. because he recognized their work ethic. He recognized the fact that they, they didn't drink alcohol, they drank tea, which <laughs> kept them going. It kept All them right. going. Okay. <laughs> obviously, okay. obviously, easier to work uh -huh. when you're not drunk. Okay. Right. Not, <laughs> but, yeah. uh -huh. so, so they laid 
10 miles of track per day. That's mm. a lot of track for a railroad to be laying. And you know, the, the thing about the Chinese railroad workers back then, they wanted opportunity. So when they came to this country, they saw this as an a way for us to, for them to contribute to the country. They saw this as opportunity for them mm. to be part of the country. So, so we think that this is a time for us to recognize what they came to do. And this is the 150th anniversary of the completion of the Chinese of the Transcontinental Railroad. Mm. So uh, this mm. year in, in May, there'll be huge celebrations to right. celebrate that. But the, it's the Rose Parade float that we will have a float in the parade. The first time there's ever been a Chinese-sponsored uh, uh, Rose Parade float. And the major sponsor, however, is Union Pacific. Why? Because actually, there's, that's a major railroad company. So we thank Union Pacific for being the major sponsor of this particular float. So January 1, we'll see that float. It has a, it has a special significance, not only to the contemporary people mm -hmm. like you and me, but also uh, it makes more sense to young people. Correct. Our young people never know that it was the Chinese, part of the Chinese Americans were part of the contributions that made the America, America, right? The part I learned, like I said, I do not do, do a show without doing homework. Yes, correct. My homework mm -hmm. tells me there are about 25,000 of Chinese skilled railroad workers mm -hmm. trained in China to come over here mm -hmm. to do the job. At mm -hmm. the end, there is only a few thousand left. Correct, correct. Yeah. That's right. A lot right. of sacrifices. And they did. Leo mentioned from east to, 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 to west, though, the Irish guys, they did the flat land, mm -hmm. right? And we go all the way to Rocky, all the way across Rocky, all the way to San Gabriel, what is the term? San Gabriel Canyon. Mm -hmm. That's the term. Go all the way there. And it was winter time. You're correct. It was winter time, right? They had to tie a rope to the cliff, going mm -hmm. down, and to bang, bang, to hand knock the hole for their food rest. And from the food rest, though, they started uh, drilling, used the dynamite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to explode. Mm -hmm. And lots of people, in the process of, uh, of climbing and falling, they fell. Died. They die right away, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Let alone the explosion. Yes. Right. When there is a, uh, okay, on the flat land, you light something, you run away. Mm -hmm. When you stand on a two foot rest, mm -hmm. right, and you light something, how do you run? Right. You need to rely yeah. on your guys on top to pull you up. Right? Any moment, any delay, well, they die all together. Yeah. So now. For that kind of contribution, for that kind of a, I would say, bloodshed contribution, though. Correct. I want to remind you of one picture, right? At the completion celebration, mm -hmm. there's a picture. Accidentally, there was a Chinese face there. Oh. And they had to erase that face for publication. Yes. What a shame. Yes. That's what great. a shame. Now history has started once again. We call it the play by the fair rule. Mm -hmm. Let's play fair. We do not want to say it is Chinese did what did whatsoever. It is the Americans who built America. We are one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, there is no reason, no no ground you kick us out, right? So, John, you agree with me? I definitely agree with you. The Chinese has made great contribution to the United States. Yeah, why not building, recognize build, them? Building the railroad is something that at that time they couldn't get Americans or whites to be working in the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. because it was too treacherous. And only the Chinese would be willing to go and plant the dynamites in, in the walls and run out. And if they don't run out in time, they're, mm -hmm. they're gone. Yeah. I mean, that is, dynamite mm -hmm. don't wait for you. No. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that contribution was, was tremendous. But, uh, but to be fair, you know, the vision of building a trans 
continental uh, railway system come from Washington, D.C., and that connected east and the west portion. Okay, my dear of the friend, United let's States. take a short moment out. We come back. We really want to talk about what did the connection of the east and the west mean to America? All right. And from then on, from that significance, we can explore as much as more as we can find to explain why America, America. Without that, can we? Can we not? Right. Anyway, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences, my dear fellow Americans, my dear fellow proud Americans, welcome back to the show. The more we talk about it, the more proud we are, because we're the one, we're the ones that we enjoy the benefit of our forefathers' contribution, and yet our forefathers, this very moment, being recognized. What a celebration. What a celebration, right? Big okay, celebration. Now, Huge. Yeah, sure. And we're talking about significance today, right? Yeah. I want to focus on several points. Point number one, the moment when the railroads join from the west to the east, from the east to west, join at Utah, that starts the, starts the page of America, of modern Americans, right? No more dragon, no more wagons, no more house, horseback riding. But the locomotives, that's you're talking about. Right, now, this is recognition number one. Recognition number two, we want to make sure this is known to the present world, mm -hmm. to people like my son and like his son, mm -hmm. right? So we have the float to symbolize it, to symbolize it, right? With these two all together, we want to talk about in the future, can we forget something such as, right? Such as, I'm white, I'm black, right? Such as to take people, to divide people by their color, by their ethnic ground, so on and so forth. We, to me, we understand we are mm -hmm. proud Americans. We mm -hmm. are the people, that's it. I want to make it a bland, right? Mm -hmm. I want to make a bland, say people are the people. So. Do you agree, do you agree, or you have different takes or our additional take on these issues for talking about the recognition? Well, you know, I mean, basically, you know, the uh, Chinese American Heritage Foundation mm -hmm. started with the mission to do just that, to recognize for the contribution of Chinese Americans in the United States. And there are fair many, play, fair many, play, yes. many, fair. many contributions, uh, you know, Back in back in eighteen eighteen forty eight, that's <clears throat> that's when gold was found in California mm -hmm. in Suter. The Creek. gold rush. Mm. And in forty nine, many Chinese came to America. Almost, I believe, sixty thousand came to America mm -hmm. to look to go to Gold Mountain, which is San Francisco, mm -hmm. and then go out and try and find gold. And uh, in that process, they worked. And from there, they went on to, it went into aquaculture in the, in the, uh, in the, San, in, into the valleys where they were growing the, the fruits and vegetables. They went, they went into, they went into all types of industries. They went to build the railroad. And now we have so many Chinese in America that are so professional. They have, they're in every single professions from judges on down. So we have a, a lot to be thankful for. And that's why the Chinese American Heritage Foundation was found. It is found to recognize all of these contributions of Chinese Americans, mm. am I right? Yeah, part of the in, entire project, why these two, uh, the Congressional Gold Medal of our soldiers fighting in the war, as well as this project with recognizing the contribution of the Chinese uh, Americans in the, in the railroad is, is a unifying event for all of us, not only back then, but of course uh, today. Both events should be unifying for our country, for, and especially for 
to be proud to be Chinese American, the fact that we did have his history tells us that we had contributions back then. But the interesting thing that you just pointed out, John, was uh, President Lincoln started this whole project right. after the Civil War right. as a unifying project for the country to mm -hmm. come back together again. Yes, 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 exactly. So if you think about how he did this, he, he, got, he got various groups together, Irish mm -hmm. and Chinese, two of the most under underthought of in the, uh, groups, you know, they it had started low, low. in 1860. Yes. It com was accomplished by 1868 something. Mm -hmm. And from then on, it took them only 12 years to issue the uh, Chinese Exclusive Act. That's mm -hmm. right. In 1882, yeah. Congress, the Chinese put, Exclusion because Act. they were right, against right. Chinese labor in America, mm -hmm. they passed the okay, law. Look at this this way. At the gold rush, we came to find the goal, mm -hmm. right? It is the gold that made this country rich, right? During the land rush, though, during the land rush, mm -hmm. you're on horseback, woo, woo, woo. During the land rush, though, there was no Chinese no. was given any land. Correct. Why? Why? Right? During the railroad construction, though, the railroad workers died so many of that mm -hmm. big contribution, mm -hmm. and yet at the end, a picture has to be erased. Right. Why? You tell me. Right? And then, if you are easy to, 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 to forget things, mm -hmm. you, you can't forget us. No problem. Forget us. Well, how come you, 1882, passed this Exclusion Act to further deprive us, deprive Chinese Americans mm -hmm. from their basics? Such as, I need a woman. No, no woman for you. Right. Such as, right. I need to get married. No, 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 no. I need to buy a piece of land. No, no, no. Right. You know, that, yeah. that law wasn't, wasn't repealed until 1943 when China was an ally. That was the China United. and the United the joined right. hands right. in the fight. That's when the Chinese Exclusion right. Act was in the, in the fight. Right. Japan, Japan bombed us 1941, right? We started being allied 1942. Mm -hmm. yeah. 1942, because when they fly to bomb Tokyo, that was 1942 though, yeah. China started cooperating with the United States already. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we do not want anything special. We just want to be Correct. reasonably, fairly recognized, right. brother. I'm not asking a lot. No. Am I right? fairly is, is, Correct. is only do, fair. Do I sound okay. like a fair? You're absolutely correct, but you know, let me well, let me just interject one point that you just brought up on why did these laws pass? Why did the Exclusion Act get get uh, uh, passed again, so it reenacted? Yeah. And because why? Today, this is where we as Chinese Americans, or we as Americans as a whole, we lost a voice. In the 1800s, we had no voice. We were not citizens. Could again, not yeah, again, my we philosophy. Had no voice. Again, my philosophy, we have to continue playing crying babies. <laughs> we have to vote. Let me put it this we way. Have we, to, yeah, we have absolutely. to vote. You're right. That's okay, what now, we're saying today. Now, in between the railroad, uh, Pan American mm -hmm. Railroad uh, mm -hmm. construction to the Exclusion Act, though, mm -hmm. do you remember some instance in LA, the slaughter? Yes. 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 There was a big slaughter. In there was LA. a big right. slaughter. Fires, mm -hmm. they right. burned, they right. hang, right? So, and that was taken not as a right. right. The six arrested, and then later on set free. Right. And then they captured four and set free. Mm -hmm. And that gives a foundation of the accretal for the, mm -hmm. for the law to pass. That's the right. Exclusion Act. Right. Yes. On and on, step by step, after we have done such a great contribution, we are not being forgotten. Right. We're being persecuted. But what, one, of the, one, of, one of the things that I really need to, to say right now is about the Rose Bowl float in uh, Pasadena in, on January the 1st. That's really a symbolic gesture of telling the world about Chinese Americans in American history. It's the hardships that we have gone through and that we need to be recognized for what we've done and our contributions from the gold rush to the railroad to the exclusion act and to the world war ii veterans and now pass the passage of a, of a bill for a, uh, a congressional gold medal for our world war ii heroes uh, i know the contribution of chinese americans throughout the histories of, of of the united states really started with 
Chinese coming here to get gold. They come for the gold mountain, mm -hmm. then they worked on the railroad, mm -hmm. and they went into World War II. They had the Exclusion Act at the same time, and uh, mm -hmm. even then, 20% of our people volunteer for the service during World War II, whereas the, the rest of America only had a 5% con uh, mm -hmm. uh, volunteer rate. So we've done a lot. Our contribution to the United States mm. is tremendous. And a Rose Bowl float hopefully will tell the story of all the hardship that Chinese American has gone through. Once so again, that's one, of the, one of the reasons one why the, I Once again, is the grassrooted voice getting yeah, viral, sure. right? Yes. And started to make it known to people, right? Who's behind their float? Uh, Wilson and Esther Lee. Chinese American Heritage Foundation uh, was just founded uh, about a year ago, as a matter mm. of fact. But but Esther and Wilson have always had this dream uh, for a while. About they how deserve do we, a big how do we credit. Use, oh, absolutely, absolutely. They deserve no a big it. credit. No question about and, it. And uh, in the American history, there's only blank, right? That's the very blank that I see that we need to fill out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I feel shameful about ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. My dear friend, my lovely audience, the wait and the see, January 1st, on the Rose Parade, you will see something upload, and you can see the picture now. I want to early release the picture. No, 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 don't draw, I draw that. <laughs> I pretend. Uh, cut, take a cut. But the John trying to cut out. So you can see from the picture now, that's at the advance of the image, and that you will see that indicates the joints of the East to the West. And then this happens to be the East-West show. At the East-West show, I'm getting especially excited every time we're talking about East and West connection, right? All right, uh, my credit goes, the credit goes to Ed Gore, John Wang, and the lots of you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next year. <laughs>